The test is in four part, part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. Now look at part 1. Part 1 You will hear a science student inquiring about English courses at a university language centre. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 1 to 7. Hi, I've come to ask about the English courses you run for international students. Oh, right. I assume you're a student at the university. Yes, I've just started. OK, well, we've got a range of courses. It depends what you think you need and how much. Oh. Um, we can't run everything at the same time, though. So, for example, in this first term, we are just doing a writing course. I see. That sounds quite useful. What else is there? Um, some of the courses only run for single terms, and we tend to focus on what students have difficulty with. That means we don't usually do speaking courses, but next term you can do listening. Oh. That'll help you with lectures and things. Our provision is all based on what the majority of our international students need. So, is everything term-based? There's nothing that you run all year? Well, let's have a look. Yes, there is a class for vocabulary and grammar every term. That's for everybody, but it's split into three or four levels. And what about in the holidays? We don't do anything during the winter or spring break. Oh. But over the summer, there's just general classes because that's what most students want. Mm. A bit of everything. Mm -hmm. OK, quite a variety then. Hmm. I'll uh, have a think about what I really need because I haven't got much time. Do you have about 20 students in each class, the same as our science seminars? We try to keep it at about 12 and certainly not more than 15. Mm -hmm. It's important for language classes. They're very different from your normal courses. Right. And how much are the classes? The rate varies depending on how many hours you attend, but you shouldn't have to pay. Usually, the department will fund you and even sort out which classes you need. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> it would be quite useful for me to have a certificate to take back to my country. Do you put us in for exams? Yes, but we don't like them to clash with your main course exams in June, so we run them in May. Oh. That leaves you time for revision. Do I have to sign up for something now? I'm not quite sure what I want. Classes haven't quite started yet, so you've got time to decide what you do. All we insist is that you sign up before week five. That gives you about three weeks to decide. OK. You now have 15 seconds to read questions 8 to 10. Then, when you've made up your mind, you need to come back here to the administration office to enroll. What do I need to bring with me when I enroll? My identity card, I guess? Yes, or your passport. Uh -huh. Then you'll be given a registration form, which you'll have to show to the teacher when you have your first class. OK. And um, should I ask my tutor about which classes I should do then? Yes. Then you get a note from him and give that to the desk when you register. Can I use the computers here as well? Yes. You'll be given a password when you go to your first class. So remember to bring a disk with you to save your work on, as you won't be allowed to save it on the hard drive. OK. Will I need anything else? Dictionary? We've got loads of those here that you can borrow. But you'll need a notebook, as we don't provide paper or files. OK. Thanks.
That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear the director of a new art centre speaking to a group of local people who have come to hear what the new art centre will be offering. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Listen carefully to the first part of the talk and answer questions 11 to 15. Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you all for turning out on this cold, wet evening. Welcome to our new art centre. I'm delighted that so many people are interested in finding out about the facilities and events that we'll be offering. I'll start with the regular evening events that we've scheduled so far. Sunday night will be film club night. Each week we'll be showing a classic film from the 40s, 50s or 60s. Films will start at quarter to seven and afterwards there will be an opportunity to discuss the film in the cafe bar for anybody who'd like to. Tickets for the film will be £5, but the discussion afterwards is free. Although anybody who wants to buy me a drink is welcome to do so. <laughs> On Thursday evenings at 7.30, the auditorium is given over to productions by touring theatre companies. This coming Thursday, we're very excited to be welcoming Pizzazz, a drama company featuring both able-bodied and physically handicapped actors. They'll be performing a rather special version of William Shakespeare's The Tempest, featuring music and dance, as well as dialogue. Fridays and Saturdays will be music nights, starting at 8pm, with classical or traditional music on the Fridays and pop rock on the Saturdays. However, as the sound system hasn't yet been fully installed, these events won't be starting for another few weeks. As well as evening performances, various events will take place during the day. So far, a mother's and toddler's session has been arranged for Monday afternoons, and of course, anybody can drop in for a coffee or a sandwich. The cafe bar will be open from 11am to 3pm and 6pm to 11pm, Mondays to Fridays, and 11am to midnight, Saturdays and Sundays. Lunch will be served from half past 12 till 2 and light snacks will be available all day. Of course, this program is just the start and we expect to be announcing many additional events in the near future. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Now I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you about becoming a member. Membership benefits include reduced price tickets, priority bookings and a monthly newsletter which will feature the latest details of forthcoming events 
plus details of other arts events in the local area. The cost of membership is just £15 a year, which I think is very reasonable. To get a membership card, you'll need to provide us with a passport-sized photo, plus payment of course, by cash or cheque. We can't accept credit cards, I'm afraid, at least not for the moment. We hope to have credit card payment facilities available in the not-too-distant future. Then, when you want to buy reduced-price tickets, you simply show your card at the box office or quote your membership number if you're making a telephone booking. Generally, a membership card will save around 20% on the full ticket price, so it really is very good value. Now we come to the most important part, your suggestions. It's your art centre, so we want to hear what you'd like to see. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You'll hear a conversation between Mrs. Lamb, a member of the staff in a large hospital, and Andrew, who is a student in the nursing school. Mrs. Lamb is explaining the rules about visiting hours in the hospital. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Hello, Andrew. I believe you want to know about visiting hours. Yes, I do, Mrs Lamb. I have to fill this form out, and I'd like to have some idea why the different parts of the hospital have different times for visiting. I see. Well, let's start with an obvious one. Intensive care. People in intensive care are very sick indeed. And for that reason, we say that visitors can come between 6 a.m. and midnight. I can understand that. At the other end of the scale, our maternity patients are usually quite well, but we restrict their visiting hours from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. We find they get very tired if we permit visitors all the time. I see. What about the surgical wards? The doctors prefer to do their rounds early in surgical, so, visiting hours are 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Surgical patients are often on very heavy painkillers, and they aren't really very good company for their visitors. But surely the visitors come to cheer up the patient, not the other way around. Of course. And often the visitors are able to help the patient a lot. That's why we allow visitors all day, the full 24 hours in the emergency ward. They help comfort the patient while they're waiting to be diagnosed, Of course, it's not just everyone who can visit a sick patient. People in intensive care can only be visited by their immediate family. What's more, we only allow two people in at any time. We let children of the immediate family in to visit people in intensive care, but we don't like to do it. It's very hard on the children, and it may distress the patient. However, if the patient asks for the child and the family agrees, that's OK. What about children in maternity? Of course we let them in. They're very pleased to see their mothers. The rule in maternity is everyone may visit, up to six people at a time.
The maternity ward is quite sociable after all. The surgical ward must be different. It is indeed. We don't allow children in the surgical ward because of the danger of infection. And as you know, we restrict the hours. There are a lot of procedures which must be carried out on surgical patients, and we only let two visitors come in at a time. And in emergency, people are allowed to visit all the time? Oh, yes. We rely on patients' relatives to be there for them, and we permit everyone to visit the emergency department at all hours. However, we restrict it to three visitors for each patient. Otherwise, the room just gets totally crowded. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Now I have your schedule for the next week's observation sessions. Are you ready? Yes. Where do I start? On Monday, you'll be in male surgical in the morning and in female surgical in the afternoon. You'll be following Dr Shea on her rounds. Thank you. And on Tuesday? On Tuesday... You'll be with Dr. Thomas in the morning and Dr. Robertson in the afternoon. No, that can't be right. You're with Dr. Thomas in the afternoon and Dr. Robertson in the morning. Do I ever get to see Dr. Kim? Yes, you'll be with Dr. Kim on Thursday and Friday. She'll take you through the children's ward and through our new teenage ward for 12 to 15-year-olds. Great. I've read a lot about that new ward. Will I see the schoolroom? Maybe another time. And what will I do on Wednesday? On Wednesday, you'll join the other students for lectures. You'll be in the Redmore Lecture Room between 8 and 10 a.m. and later between 2 and 3 p.m. Thank you. Do you know how big my class is? The intake this term is 200 first-year students. I'm pleased to say about one-third are men, which is good. Nursing used to be an almost entirely female occupation. I know. My father trained as a nurse, and he was considered very unusual. Is he still working as a nurse? Yes. He's working in a hospital in the country. I guess I just wanted to follow his example. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Part 4. You will hear a talk on the work of a printing department at a university. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. I am here to give you a brief outline of the work of this new department. The Department of the Printed Word has a very short history, having been created just 10 years ago. Some statistics to start with. The first intake of undergraduate students consisted of 20 students, which rose to 37 in the second year and we now have about 50 in the first year, doing a wide range of courses, full and part-time. We have a thriving research department, 
with 17 students on the taught MA course and 7 students doing research full-time. In all, we have 9 full-time lecturers and 16 part-time lecturers who work mainly but not exclusively in our evening department. Of the total student body, approximately 21% are from outside the country, a number which has been increasing steadily over recent years. Although students from overseas have to reach a minimum level of competence in English before they follow a course at the university, some may require remedial help with their English. And we can offer help through the student support services as part of the general assistance given to all students. For home students, both graduate and undergraduate, there are bursaries to help with travel and accommodation, for which I would advise you to contact Mrs. Riley at the end of this session. Increasingly, we are forging external links with organisations in the publishing world, and we have been very fortunate in that we have received money to sponsor not just various students within the department, but also technicians and lecturers. Each year we hold a series of lectures which are given by external speakers in the world of printing and the media. The series of workshops that you see around you have been built thanks to a very generous donation which has allowed us to develop our facilities for bookbinding and restoration. Now, the main work of the department relates to teaching the mechanism of printing. And as most printing is now so highly technological, all our students have to be computer literate. For those of you who are interested in taking a module in this department from another department and who feel that you may not have the necessary computer skills, don't let the technology put you off. We have a number of specialist technicians who can support and deliver crash programs in the computing technology required. As long as you can switch on the computer, you are halfway there. We have what can only be called state-of-the-art facilities, especially for those wishing to move into the publishing world, working not just as printers, but also in editing, page design, layout and bookbinding. With the extensive facilities we have for book restoration, some of our former students are now employed as expert book restorers and conservationists, skills which were once almost dying out. In the display, you will notice samples of work on book cover design, and as well as having all the necessary computer programs for dealing with printing, we have some old printing presses. Despite being largely a modern department, we do have an increasing interest in research into the history of the printed word, ranging from early European to Chinese and Japanese printing techniques. We have in fact some very well-known experts on early printing in Europe in the 15th and 16th centuries. If this area appeals to you, you can talk to Dr. Fred Clare afterwards. From China, we're lucky to have as a visiting lecturer Dr. Yu, who is an authority on early Chinese manuscripts and printing machines. If you are thinking about doing a module with us, or you are interested in doing research after you have finished your first degree, the person to talk to is Professor Clarkson, who will be able to give you all the details. For postgraduate research, you should really be thinking about applying now, even though we are only in December, as the department now attracts large numbers of people, and we always have many applications for each research position. That is the end of Part 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.